Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at some ray tracing on an iGPU. Now this might sound odd to some people, but it's totally possible to do with AMD's new RDNA 3 graphics. And for this, we're actually going to be using the new Ryzen 7 7848 Jess. Obviously, we've got those Radeon 780M graphics, and these run at up to 2700 megahertz on this chip. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I love my APUs, and this is turning out to be one of the most powerful that we've tested so far. Now, I've actually got a laptop with a 7940HS, which is a bit more potent than this, but for this setup here, I think it's absolutely amazing. The 7840HS can definitely put the power down, and I'm really excited to show you what these integrated graphics can do with ray tracing, but before we get started, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office, but the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84, but if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate and Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone and basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. And we're actually paired up with 32 gigabytes of 5600 megahertz DDR5 RAM, which does help out with that iGPU performance. But overall, this is possible, and I was really interested to show this off because I actually got some decent performance out of some of the games. Now, we're not talking 120 FPS, we're not even talking 60 FPS with a lot of the stuff, but to be able to run ray trace games on integrated graphics right now is pretty awesome, and it's only going to get better in the future. If you're not familiar with the AMD Ryzen 7 7840HS, basically what we have here are 8 Zen 4 cores, 16 threads, it's got a boost up to 5.1 gigahertz, and on the CPU side of things, we are seeing some amazing performance. But really, the claim to fame to these new APUs are those new RDNA 3 based graphics. And with this, it does run up to 2700 megahertz, but you know, the GPU alone can definitely pull some wattage. So if I run uh, just GPU Z here, you'll see that uh, we're actually at around 40 watts just on the GPU. Now the CPU is kind of at idle right now. It is using a little bit of juice there, but uh, most of this power is going directly to that GPU or that iGPU. And with this setup, I've actually got it maxed out at around 80 watts. That way we can send enough power to the iGPU and the CPU at the same time to get the best performance we can out of this while gaming or basically doing anything. And with Ray Trace Gaming, we definitely need a lot of power going to that GPU. I want the maximum clocks. The first game we're going to be taking a look at is Minecraft with RTX on. This is the Windows version of Minecraft. You can go into the uh, built-in store in the game and download some stuff from NVIDIA. They've made a few different demos, and each demo has a couple different sections. We'll take a look at a couple here. And uh, you might notice we're only at around, you know, 22 to 25 FPS here with Minecraft and RTX on. Afterburner is stating that we're pulling around 43 watts in total from this APU, and I've locked the GPU clock at its max, 2700 megahertz. And doing this just ensures that we can send enough wattage there to get up to those clocks. So if I was at a lower TDP with this setup, it would be starving off the CPU performance, but we've got plenty here, and it's Minecraft, so we don't need that much. Now I'll tell you, with RTX off, this is only going to pull around 15 watts in total to run this at 1080p. I mean, basically as high as we can go with the game itself. Obviously, we're far off from 60 FPS, but it's still really impressive in my opinion to see this running on integrated graphics, and it really does look amazing. This is really just the start to ray tracing on integrated graphics, and I did want to test out one more spot here. This is one that's given me trouble in the past on other RDNA 3 based APUs, right through these two doors, kind of falls right on its face. And I was actually expecting this to drop down to around 18 FPS. Overall, really not bad for integrated graphics, and yeah, I mean, we definitely have ray tracing on. This is more of the light and shadows area. There's more demos that I can test out in the future, but I really want to move over to some more games to show you what it can do. 
Next on the list, we've got Portal with RTX. You can get this from Steam if you want to test it out yourself. Uh, just like Minecraft, I mean, we're at 22 to 25 FPS with this game. And if you've ever tested this out on a higher end system, you know how good it looks. Right now, we're only at medium settings because uh, when it's at high settings, it really does go down below 18 FPS. So it's working, but this isn't something that I would want to play every single day. And again, I do want to mention that, you know, we're only pulling around 37 watts from this APU in total. It doesn't need any more. There's no way we can really throw more wattage at it to get better performance because that GPU is already totally maxed out. Moving over to Quake 2 with RTX, and I do want to mention that I did have to turn the brightness up when I was editing this because you really couldn't see it. It's just such a dark game with RTX on, but this does give you an idea of how well it runs. 32 FPS on average, and without RTX we can run this at around 400 FPS with the kind of wattage we have right now. It doesn't even need to pull that much to go up that high, but uh, check out these light trails. This is super awesome, and I've run this on a much higher end system. Pretty impressive. This was released for free over on Steam if you want to try this out on your machine. And with this, they didn't add any HD texture packs or anything like that. It's just ray tracing, giving us all of that lighting effect. It really does change the game. Here's Forza Horizon 5. We're at high settings with ray tracing set to ultra. In the last video I did testing out ray tracing on the ROG Ally, I had somebody mention that they thought ray tracing only worked in the auto show mode like this, but it actually does work in game. This game really doesn't give us the best example of ray tracing out there, at least during the day, but we did take a big hit to performance by taking ray tracing to ultra here. Now this game works great on these iGPUs, even from older 5000 series iGPUs. Right now we're getting an average of around 68 FPS, 1080p, high, ray tracing, at ultra. We can definitely play it like this if you want to, and it does look good. All of those lighting effects bouncing off the paint on the cars just looks absolutely amazing. But I want to show you here, just by going to our settings, we're going to go to graphics, and take ray tracing back down to high. We can actually get a gain of around 11 to 12 FPS. You'll see we were averaging 68, now we're up there around 78, 79 FPS on average. So we did take a hit to performance by taking ray tracing up to ultra, but I'll tell you, I mean, I don't notice too much of a difference going from high to ultra with ray tracing, and right now, I mean, 1080p high on an iGPU with Forza Horizon 5 is great performance. I mean, it still looks really good and plays absolutely amazing. Doom Eternal is another one that I wanted to test with ray tracing. 1080p medium, and if you take a look at the ray tracing section, it's on, but it's only set to quality. I'm not sure if that's because I'm at medium settings or I'm using an AMD GPU here, but uh, we do have it enabled, and you can definitely tell a difference with it off versus it on. Lots of shadow and lighting effects, uh, especially on your gun. You just see those reflections, and I think it looks really good, especially when we're around some different colored lighting. And we'll move over there in a second, but it does make a difference. It would have been nice to be able to, you know, take this up from quality, but unfortunately, it's just kind of stuck there. If you know why it's sitting there, let me know in the comments below. It might be because I'm at medium settings, or it just might come down to the fact that I'm using an AMD GPU. Go right over here. You can see those lighting effects. I mean, it looks great on this little system. And at 1080p medium settings, we do get some dips under 60. But with a FreeSync monitor, it's something that I would never notice, and I wouldn't mind playing it like this all day. And of course, the final game we had to test here was Cyberpunk 2077. We're at 1080p, ray tracing low. That's the preset, so it does take a lot of our settings to medium. Now we could get much better performance out of this game and enable ray tracing, but we need to take the settings down to low. I just figured we'd go with one of those ray tracing presets, and we'll test out medium in a second. But we're getting an average of around 35 FPS with it set up like this. And you can see we're pulling around 63 watts from that APU. Again, just like most of the games that we tested here, this isn't something that I would want to play with ray tracing on with this iGPU all day. But you know, if you didn't mind messing around with it at 30 FPS, then you could definitely have a good time with Cyberpunk 2077. 
So right now the preset we're using is ray tracing low. Let's head into the settings and turn it up to medium. Uh, Psycho is out of the question. It will crash the game. Go into medium. We'll apply this. And you'll see we did have an average of around 34 to 35 FPS. It's dropped down to an average of around 22 FPS. So just taking that ray tracing preset up to medium really takes a toll. But it also changes some of those graphics settings. Like I mentioned, taking it all down the low and just enabling ray tracing will net you much better performance. But those presets are what a lot of people like to use. So yeah, ray tracing does work on these new RDNA 3 APUs. It's not something that a lot of people are going to be doing all the time, but it's there if you want to test it out, if you want to mess around. And these integrated graphics have definitely come a long way. And personally, I can't wait to see what the next generation brings. Now, if you're interested in checking out some ray tracing on the new ROG Ally, I did a video. I'll leave a link for that in the description. We did see very similar performance there, and that uses the Ryzen Extreme Z1. But the mini PC we're using in this video is the B-Link GTR7 with that 7840HS. Got a couple videos posted on that also, so go ahead and check the channel out. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on this little PC, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.